Lesson 2 The Main Menu Hello fellow game designers, welcome to the Wicked Cat Unity Introduction course. Today, we are going to continue to explore the Unity menu bar, and its several options. You can find the menu bar on the upper left corner of your screen. Step 2. The Edit Menu To exemplify the following commands, you need to have a game object in your scene. Under the Hierarchy tab, click on Create and select Cube. This will create a simple cube mesh in the scene. Make sure the cube is in a position where you can see it in your scene. Moving on to the edit menu. The first two options allow you to undo or redo changes you have made in the Unity editor, for example, changing the place of a game object in the scene. The next three options you are probably familiar with them. Just like a text editor lets you cut, copy and paste text. The Unity Editor allows you to do the same operations with game objects. You can cut and paste. Or you can copy and paste. Note that the game object you paste will be in the exact same position as the original. The next couple of options allow you to duplicate game objects or delete them. Duplicate works like a copy command followed by a paste. This means that the duplicate will create a copy of the selected game object in the exact same location as the original. The delete, as you probably guessed, will delete a game object from your scene. Moving on to the next four options, you now have, Frame Selected, Lock View to Selected, Find, and Select All. The Frame Select command should frame the selected game object in your scene tab. However, this command seems to be malfunctioning on the last version of Unity. Yet. You can achieve the same result by double-clicking over the game object on your Hierarchy tab. The Lock View to Selected works in similar way to the double-click on the game object. The Find option allows you to search a game object in your scene. For example, you can search for Cube. This will make your game object stand out in the scene. Finally, the Select All option allows you to select every game object in your scene. The next thing on the menu are the Preferences. Once you click there, a new window will pop up with several options. Here you can turn several features on and off. The options you can change here are, Auto Refresh. This allows the assets to automatically update when they change. Always show Project Wizard on Startup. Compress Assets on Import. Editor Analytics. This allows the editor to send information back to Unity automatically, show asset store search hits, verify saving assets. This tells Unity to verify which assets to save individually on quitting, and skin, which is a pro feature. Under external tools, you can select the script editor that you want to work with. You can also set the Android SDK location, 
This is important if you are going to deploy your project to an Android device. In colors, you can change the default colors of the editor. Under keys, you can change the default keys for several operations, like moving in the scene. Finally, under cache server, you can enable the use of a cache server, set the IP address and check the connection. On the module option, you can access the module manager and check for available packages and downloaded packages. The next three options are play, pause and step. They work exactly the same as the three buttons over your scene tab. The play button allows you to test your game on the editor, while the pause button pauses it. The step option allows you to step frame by frame in your game. On selection, you can create selection sets in order to simplify your work. Create two cubes in your scene and select them. Next, go to the selection on the edit menu and select, choose save selection 1. Now, deselect the objects. Now go to edit and selection again. This time select, load selection 1. As you can see, the editor automatically selects the group of game objects that you defined for selection 1. The next two options are project settings and render settings. We will take a closer look to the project settings on the next video, so let's jump right to the render settings. As you can see, several options will appear on your inspector tab. Here you can set several values like fog, its color and mode, the density and so on. You can also set the ambient light and the skybox material. You can also set halo and flare properties. We will take a closer look at those when we start creating environments. The next option, Network Emulation, allows you to define the network emulation settings for your project, NAN, Broadband, DSL, IST or Dial-Up. On the graphic emulation, you can select no emulation, shader model 3, or shader model 2. This allows you, for example, to lower the quality of the game shaders. This can be useful if your target machines are not the top gaming machines. Lowering the shaders lets you see how the game would be in those machines. The last option on the menu is snap settings. Once you click there, a new window will pop up. This menu allows you to change how much you're going to snap. To see the snap options working, select a game object and move it while holding the control button. As you can see, it will move a unit at a time. If you change the value to 3, you will see that snaps at every 3 units. The same applies to rotation and scale. On the next video, we will continue with our lesson on the main menu bar, and we will take a closer look at the project settings and what they do. Please, don't forget to subscribe our channel and leave a like on the video. If you have any doubts or feedback, use the comment section below. We hope you enjoyed the video. Keep doing awesome games, and have a nice day.